Today is going to be a little different. I typically like to give, typically my style is what's called expository preaching, which you probably are familiar with, in that you take up a section of scripture and you just work through that, and that's that's the meat of the message. Today is what you call a topical message. I have a topic to bring, um, a specific topic, and of course it's lots of scripture, but it's it's um it's not so much one particular set. And, and I did that because I really feel strongly led to do so. What an awesome theme, faith, right? Faith is a powerful theme, right, for, for a service. This is an aspect of faith, of faith, and I believe it's a very powerful and important aspect of faith. I believe it's where faith starts, continues, and I won't ever say ends because faith never ends, but where it starts and continues. I'm going to start this morning by doing something you may or may not be familiar with. I'm going to see, watch for a moment. You're going to, you're going to see something a little unusual. And see if you can figure out what I'm signing. This is my language. Okay, so you can figure out what I'm signing. Any guesses what I just signed? Oh. <laughs> this was it? It's okay. I think of Jesus coming. Yes. And the manger. Yes. And the way he worked with us yeah. on earth yeah. and how he was taken to okay. God. Okay. So Mr. Brother, that thinks of Jesus coming and, he, and the, the manger and how and he works with them. And, and you're, 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 you, you are on, on the right track. I just I just signed for you probably the most, I believe, the most important, at least certainly the most well-known scripture in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that all or whosoever believes in him will not perish as dying, but everlasting life. It's life forever. For God so loved the world. The most, I think, one of the most, I mean, certainly the core foundation, right, of the gospel. So I say the most important. It's hard to say that there's a particular scripture that's the most important, right? In the whole book, right? I did this to make a very simple point today. And the point is that if we don't know how to mutually communicate, in this case, I'm sign, to communicate, communicate, communicate with somebody, anybody, it's going to put a heavy strain on the growth of that relationship. We need to be able to have communication that's effective and that's powerful. But it's going to be really tough, isn't it? Have a relationship that grows unless you have effective communication, whether it's a marriage, friendship, your boss, coworker, any relationship. Any relationship we want to grow in, effective communication is critical. Being able to share ourselves through effectively right, sharing and speaking. And also, which is the, the crux of our, our, our focus today, or I should say the focus of our, of our um, sermon today, to be able to understand the other person through what's called active listening. Active listening. Who's heard of that term? Active right. It's a very, it's a very common term. Active listening. Sure, you may have heard of it. It's not just to hear words. This is my own definition I came up with, and I actually wrote it down in a textbook a million years ago when I was in grad school for counseling. I wrote this down. We had, we had to, it was one of my classes. We had to write out definitions of things where we thought and presented it. This was my definition of active listening: focused attention to the other person's words and actions. So there's body language. To better understand their intended message, along with any emotion tied into that message. So that was my definition of active listening. In other words, attempting to hear the heart behind the words. Not just listening to the words, but trying to deeply understand what's behind, what's the intention of what the person is saying. Active listening is critical for growth, long-term growth in any relationship. It's so very critical. We tech, when we say the word relationship, we tend to think of you know a spouse or that type of thing, but really any relationship. <clears throat> I want to give you an example of why good communication is so important. Why? Because poor communication leads to something like painful misunderstandings. Misunderstandings are very difficult to deal with. 
Here's a, here's a story, I don't know if you've heard this before, of the butcher who tried to compliment his wife with a work reference. Okay, I will, I will, give, I will tell you that the ending did not go well. The butcher tried to compliment his wife with work reference. So this married couple are out for an evening walk one day, one night, when suddenly a gorgeous woman just strolls on by, and the man very briefly, respectfully, did not gawk, or maybe just a, a, a half a second to a second at most, glances over, glances back. He was appropriate. He didn't go for a double look, ladies. <laughs> he kept his eyes at appropriate level. But he noticed. That's how God created them. We're visual learners, right? He was very appropriate. However, the wife noticed this look, and she said to her husband, you better watch it. I see you. <laughs> She's just a little concerned. Well, loving his wife, wanting to make her, you know, to, to, to make sure she she's at peace. He, he tried to pay her a compliment. Remember, he's a butcher. He's got his work in mind. So he probably says, oh, baby, baby, don't worry about it. My tender little lamb chop. It's okay. You should know by now. I would never, ever go out for just a plain hamburger, hamburger when I got the whole cow right here at home. <laughs> That's what you call bad communication. <laughs> he meant to say when I've got the filet. <laughs> bad communication creates misunderstandings. It's kind of a funny little joke. I learned that years ago from my mom when I was a kid. I'm like, what's she talking about? And I learned <laughs> healthy communication it is so critical. It's so critical. I remember when I was an undergraduate at Ambassador College, my old church's college, years and years ago, my speech language teacher said that approximately 85% of all arguments come out of some form of miscommunication or misunderstanding. I disagree. I think it's got to be way higher than that. <laughs> it's just got to be. Here's my main point for today about what I've shared. Good communication is important, important for all relationships, but our personal relationship with God is no exception. We need good communication with God. And, the, and, and what I'm really going to focus on today is listening, active listening. That's the topic for today. It is so critical that we, that we actively, purposefully, with driving purpose, listen to God. Now, in your heads, what are you thinking? What does it mean, listen to God? Well, you'll, you'll hear. You'll see what I mean. If you think, well, we can't mean this part of listening, chances are I, I, I do mean this kind of listening. The one that people go, wait a minute, you mean, and we'll get into that. When I was here last time, I shared with you that I'm a huge believer in what I call loving challenge questions. So I have one for you today. Here's today's main loving challenge question, just to think about, to consider. As of today, right now, sitting in this room or online at home, how would you describe your personal communication with God? Now, some people say, well, you mean your personal relationship with Jesus? Y yes, that's part of it. But I mean, more specifically than that, how was your personal communication with God? What's it like? Would you say you're more of a listener? Or more of a speaker? Or is there a balance? Where are you at in that? Where, when I say listening to God, what feelings do you get on that? What thoughts and ideas do you get from that? Do you hear God? Where do you hear God? How do you hear God? But anyway, as of today, the main question, how was your personal communication with God? And there's no judgment in that question whatsoever. Be very clear on that. There's never judgment in my uh, loving. That's why, that's why I used to say challenge questions. And I, and I added the word loving challenge question because it's meant to be loving. It's meant to encourage ideas and thinking. It's not never, ever, ever meant to judge. If your honest answer to yourself, to you and God, is that you hope it will be better than it is right now, that's okay. And that's good. Because that's why it's a loving challenge question to encourage us. If you think it's right on target, awesome. That's great, too. But there's always room for improvement, right? And growth over in this, in, in this human, human shell, right? There's always room for growth. It takes time to practice communication with God. And God knows that. God's never condemning or judging. He just wants us to, to, to be moving forward, right? To be learning to listen. How is our listening still with God? Are we actively listening? Today, as I said, I, and I love the theme for today, our overall theme is faith, and that's great. So you might be wondering, how in the world does active listening tie into faith? Well, eh, it ties into faith powerfully. 
our food it has everything to do with it because effective communication with God isn't just about saying your prayers or saying grace, uh, not this kind of things. We want to talk with God. And when I, when I say saying, I mean, some, from some idea of some formalized, or, you know, the thing, you know, we, we teach our kids when they're little, you know, we teach them certain kind of memories because you're getting them the habit of the brain that's good. You know, but if, we're 50, if you're my age, 51 years old, and I'm saying the same, you know, 20 words a day, and I go, check, done their prayers, right? Fed the dog, check, right? Took out the trash, check, said my prayers, check. It's that's it's not God's not about checkbox anything about relationship, right? It's about communication and, and, and relationship. If you had with your spouses or your, your best friend or whatever, and you know, you, you just sat and, and, and you, you had a memorized every day, you sat down and said, Hello, honey. Um, how are you this morning? Did you brush your you know, it'd, be, it'd be ridiculous, right? To be foolish. We have, we have we have spontaneous talk and discussion and emotion. God wants the same thing with us. Every one of us. He craves that. Am I saying we should be talking to God just like a buddy? Like, well, yes, I am. Absolutely. You mean I don't have to be on my knees in my hands in this position? With, with, with our Father, you know, who are in heaven, hell, it. No. Go for a job or a walk and just talk. Spontaneous. God wants that relationship. But then the question beyond that is, are we listening? The old joke is, if you know, if God wanted us to talk more, we would have how many mouths? Two in one ear. You know the joke. You know they say you're talking on both sides of the head. It look awful weird if your nose, if your if your ear was here and your mouth were here, right? Why well, is the way this looks like that? Right? You got to talk. Listen. Up. God gave us one mouth. And it's just as simple as that. But God gave us one mouth and two ears for a reason, right? In other words, talk half as much as you do. So, <laughs> does God say to, to be quick to speak and slow to listen? No. Slow to speak. Listen, listen, listen. And it includes listening to Him. Today's title Want to grow in faith? Listen closely. Want to grow in faith? Question mark. Listen closely. Exclamation point. So, I've got to actually title that up. Under God's Word. Did you know that there are a ton of scriptures in God's word about listening to him, about communication with God all over the place, right? And they absolutely prove that God wants us to have that close, intimate connection and relationship with him as one of his children who wants that desperately. Not just from people thousands of years ago or from our faith leaders today. I've heard people say to me, I've talked about this in you know, Christian counseling, the places I've worked as a therapist for 17 years and before, you know, and, and did some Christian counseling and things. People are like, oh, I'm, I'm not a pastor, God's not going to talk to me. I'm like, yeah. let me show you where, where and why God wants to talk to you. It's not about position. Well, let me, let me rephrase it. It's all, it's all about position. It's your position as God's child, He's chosen, blessed child. He craves relationship. He wants to talk with you. He's waiting to speak with you. Today, I'm going to show you three specific examples, just three, that relate to active listening, active listening to God. First one is John 10, 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice, right? I know them and they follow me. You hear God's voice. Now, you might think, and I've had people say this, I don't hear God's voice. He doesn't talk to me. Let me challenge you and say with love that it's an impossibility. It's impossible. God doesn't stop talking. He tells us he speaks through nature. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. There's a lot of ways God speaks to us. The problem isn't the talking. The problem is the listening. Right? And that's not placing judgment in anybody. But if you say, I just have so much trouble hearing God's voice, that just tells me one thing. Not that God's mad at you or frustrated or he's blocked you off in some way. Some people say, well, I, I have a sin issue in my life and God's blocked me off. Show me in scripture where God says I'm blocking you off. I am always with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. There's no dot, 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 unless you do this. That's not in there. God is always communicating with us. Problems of this. Notice also, Jesus, my sheep hear my voice. 
And I know what the money is. By the way, you know, Jesus didn't say some of my sheep. He said, my sheep. What does my sheep mean? That's all inclusive. That means all of my sheep. You hear me? Next, Romans. Even if they don't know they hear you. If we, even if we don't understand that we're hearing him, we're hearing him, right? Romans 8, 14. Next one. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Led. How do you get led by somebody? Paul says led. Think about what Paul's saying here. Those who are led by the Spirit. How do you get led by anything? How do you get led by a boss, a coach, a pastor, a parent, by God himself? How do you get led? You get led by paying attention and listening. Holy Spirit doesn't stop talking. We are led by the Spirit of God. That is God. He is God. It's pretty hard to follow instructions and be led when we haven't heard the instructions in the first place. God is speaking. So, of course, God wants us literally, literally, carefully, intently listening. Finally, Matthew 27, 50-52. These three verses talk about the physical death of our Lord. They say, when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. Did you notice these three verses are filled with awesome metaphor? Each one of these could be a sermon or a series of sermons. I mean, it's awesome. Rocks splitting. I mean, come on, the bodies of holy people coming out of the grave. That's, that's, that's an awesome, you know, reference here. But what I really want to focus on right now is that curtain being torn. What was God doing when that curtain was torn? The heavy veil from top to bottom. You often hear about this, right? In, in, in the springtime. I'm bringing it up today in October. Woo, rebel. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> the curtain's being torn from top. Above. You, you know this, but it's a great reminder. God was giving one explicit direction here, one explicit idea to think about. He was telling us something very powerful. And that that curtain he's referring to was the one, of course, before the Holy of Holies. You had to get the temple, you had the section of the temple, right before the, the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant was stored. Remember, the Ark of the Covenant was that representation of God's presence on earth. Was God stuffed into a box? I think not. It's a representation of God to the human mind. God is obviously limitless, right? You can never put God into a box. Even, even though we try, you can't ever do that. It was with a, with a, the only, only time of the year the high priest would go in once a year. On the holiest, this is the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. It's uh, Yom Kippur, which we also don't know and many of us celebrate the past of the Day of Atonement. So the bottom line is that no one was allowed in there. There was no intimacy. Even the high priest had certain ritualistic. He wasn't like, hey, God, what's up? All right, smack in the box. Good to see you again, right? There was no intimacy. It was a ritualistic um, connection. And God was saying that sin has blocked. But when Jesus paid that price, don't you want to go back 2,000 years and be a witness? Oh, I'm really hoping that we get that experience someday. I really hope that gives us that. You can see in his words, it's actually like being that, right? That'd be, oh, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. To see at the temple, the Holy of Holies, that veil, that thick, heavy veil, torn, a physical impossibility, a physical impossibility. From top to bottom, shh, the sound of that tearing. What's God telling us? God's saying the debt's paid. An open communication is restored. You think Verizon Wires coined the phrase, can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that question, can you hear me now, if God asked them, is yes, we can. But the question is, are we listening? Truly listening. In any sermon about listening to God, you would expect the natural question to be, What do you mean listening to God? What does that mean listening to God? When I said in the beginning we're going to talk about active listening to God, what thoughts came to your mind? What did you think about? One time in a Bible discussion group, I mentioned listening to God, and this lady said to me, She's pretty sweet lady, she meant well. 
I will tell you her tone was a bit condescending. She said, Pastor, do you really mean that we audibly, we can audibly hear God with our ears? You surely don't mean that. That's not possible, right? I feel like if I had answered, well, yeah, she's going to pounce on me. It's kind of an awkward, you know, awkward thing. This is how I respond. And I said, well, I never personally experienced that myself in an audible sense in terms of the way I would hear any of you speak to me audibly, although I have heard and do hear God in my mind. No, I'm not a medication, but a medication, <laughs> right? In that audible sense, I want that. I haven't heard that yet that I know of. However, I said, let me ask you two questions. That's the group, two questions. One, other than sinning, tell me anything that God can't do. Can you name anything that God can't do other than sin? God cannot sin. Other than that, is there anything God can't do? No? Okay. His choice. Number two, can anyone show me in God's word where it says in the 21st century we can't hear God's audible voice? Is that in the word? I'm believing. I scoured through the scripture after that because I was really curious. Is there anything that says I will stop talking at this point? You know, at any point. It's not in there. Just because we're not used to something doesn't mean it can't happen. So my point, because I've never personally, we've, maybe you maybe you have, I don't know. And I, I do know, I have heard testimony of people who have said they have heard audibly God's voice. Who am I to judge them? Just because I haven't, who am I to say you have? That's very dangerous territory we have to go down. Maybe they have heard God audibly. I'm just saying today, let's not, let's try not to limit our limitless God. That's what I'm saying. It comes to this thing. To God. But what other ways? For those of us who haven't heard God's voice audibly, does that mean we haven't heard God? Of course not. What ways came to your mind? A ton of ways God talks to us. First Corinthians 12, I'm going to give you a short list here. First Corinthians, Corinthians 12, God speaks through a message of knowledge and a message of wisdom. That means God imparts knowledge and wisdom. Some people call it a word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Basically, think of it this way, information downloads or direction downloads. Do this. You ever have a thought suddenly, I need to call somebody. I don't know why, I just need to call them. And you call them and you're like, wow, God told me to call them. You knew that it was him after you thought out what the flow was going on. Or sending a card or praying for somebody or whatever it is. That would be called a word of wisdom or word of knowledge. If you're talking with somebody and you, you, you just you get this sense that something is wrong. Well, you're a very empathic person because you, you feel it. And that may be true, God. That may be this you know, spiritual gift that God will give people is that, that you know, connection. But say there's a certain word that you say, where'd that come from? It's called a word of wisdom. When I'm pre a preaching every single week, every time I'm talking with somebody, I'm doing some counseling, whatever it is, I'm always God asking God, Lord, speak through me. I'm asking God for his word of knowledge and word of wisdom. God speaks to us. These are sometimes things sound a little churchy or religious, like a word of this or word of that. Oh, that's I mean, really? That just means God's imparting knowledge to you to share and to love others. That's all it is. You don't have to worry about the titles behind you when you're wrapped up in that. It's, oh, that is, it's beautiful. So let me ask you for that very first one. Is God spoken through you? And does God speak to you? Yeah, that alone, right? Let's move on. Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing the, the message, and the message is heard the word of Christ. Has God ever spoken to you through his Bible, his word? Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> and I hope that's a regular, regular thing. Do we realize how powerful and crucial God's word is? Oh, my. Oh, what a blessing. What a gift, right? So choosing to not read the Bible just creates this massive handicap. It really does toward our spiritual growth. With Christ. Not reading, I'm going to repeat that statement. Not repeat, not reading God's word, setting it aside. I don't understand it. How do you learn to ride a bike? You ride a bike. How do you read, learn to read the Bible? You read the Bible and trust God that you'll work out in faith at the top of the Listening to God. And you say to God, this, and, I, and by the way, I'm going to throw something that's really important. I'm a huge advocate for prayerful reading. What I'm saying is, while you're reading the word, 
Don't just say, okay, God, I'm about to read the Bible. Tell me to read. Hey, amen. And then start reading. <laughs> no, Lord, would you call me to understand? Open my eyes. I'm like, you just see this. You understand, Lord. Speak to me through this. And then as you go, be like, hey, Lord. So I hear it here, but it says, am I, tell, am I encouraging us to have a, a casual conversation with God? Yes. And later on, a reverent one and a worshipful one and a jogging and having fun, having communication with God, but even the word as you go through the Bible. Lord, it says it right here. It really, really, as if, as if, because he is, he's right here, because he is. Not just hoping he's with you, he's with you. He's in you, the Holy Spirit. So, prayer for, have you ever done it? I mean, really think about that. If there's anything you want to take away from today, the, the number one thing, take this. Pray while you're reading his word throughout. Pray continuously. Power of the spiritual truth in here. <clears throat> All right. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, iron, so no, no, so one person sharpens another. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. In other words, God speaks to us, speaks to us through other people, not just your pastors, not just your spiritual leaders in that sense. You're also our spiritual leaders in Christ. He speaks to us through each other. So the question then needs to become is it, it, it's great to talk about, hey, how's that football game? That's fine. You know, hey, how, you, how, you got a good recipe for a pie? That's great. But ask yourself in your conversation with your brothers and sisters, is it only stick to football and pies? Or does it go to a deeper level? If it doesn't, that's bad to help you with that. Well, I really want to go deeper in this relationship. Well, what are they talk about? Hey, what did you think about that sermon last week? Boy, that Gus Michael come up. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm kidding. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bring up a conversation in truth. And let the Holy Spirit lead that conversation. So don't leave it at football sometimes. Again, there's nothing wrong. God wants us to enjoy it. I'm not bashing that stuff. I'm saying, where's the balance? You know what I'm talking about. When you have a you have a conversation with God, it's like it's connection. I mean, I don't I don't say, hey God, I want to trade you know pie recipes. I mean, you know, I wouldn't mind if I didn't make an awesome pie, but <laughs> but with each other, where's that depth that relationship? There's just there's just so much meat to when we get really talking about talking with praise. Awesome to see that. Three more. The, 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 I'm sure there's a lot more reasons of ways God speaks to us than this, too. But the three more I'm throwing here. Did you know that God speaks to us through our trials? Well, I certainly hope so. Otherwise, what a waste. Right? If we're wise enough to be listening. Human time, human thought process says, let me get this trial as fast as I can and forget it and never go back. What a sad waste. We can gain so much wisdom through what's, what what's, has happened to us. Why do you think God allows trials? Because he loves us. He wants to grow us, and he wants to use our experiences to bless other people. And that's another tie-in to why we should be talking about spiritual discussions, because may if I go through a trial, what I gain at the wisdom, may I share that, so hopefully you can avoid having to go through a similar trial. Think of when, 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 when we have our children, and they're young. And the kid goes, hey, what would happen if I put that knife in that socket? That'll be fun. And you think to yourself, well, sure, that'll be a good object lesson. No, you stop. <laughs> right? Yeah. Same with each other. If we can share our life lessons and share our trials, don't we gain from them? Maybe we can help somebody to the best. You know what I'm saying? So communication is so critical with each other and with God. Um, God speaks to us by bringing to your remembrance. I, I praise for that. I pray that nobody from my, my, my opening, my, my, my prayer at the beginning of this. Bring to remembrance the moment, John 14, 26, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said. God brings it to remembrance. I ask him every week, bring it to remembrance what you want. That is an awesome promise. There's just one thing about that. God speaks to us to bring to remembrance. One little caveat, a little, 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 little piece there we need to remember. What does it mean to bring to remembrance? Bring to remembrance doesn't mean first knowledge. Mm -hmm. If I say, let me give you an example. If I said, okay, I'm going to go to Boston this week, or Waltham, excuse me, and I'm going to preach, but I'm not going to bring a note that we're prepared. God, when I get up there, then you just start talking. <laughs> this would have been the most boring sermon. It would have been very obvious to the rest of you that I did not prepare. 
very obvious. And I would have been humiliated, right? But point is, it's not about humiliation, the point is, in order to get, for God to bring something to remembrance, it has to be there in the first place. What is my point? My point is getting God's word. You want the word to come back at the moment when you have that connection so you can be powerful and effective to, to reach somebody for him? Then get the word in you in the very beginning. He doesn't say, I, Holy Spirit doesn't say, I'll bring it to the first knowledge. Now, I, I'm not saying he, he doesn't or he can't, but in this scripture, he says, bring it to remembrance. That's a powerful point to remember. You got to get it in there. So important. Finally, Acts 2 17 is about God speaking to us through visions and dreams at the end of time. Visions and dreams. He says, Young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. Each time I read that, I just prayerfully think to myself, Well, I guess that's God's way of telling us we're young or old, <laughs> right? Visions or dreams. I, I prefer visions. <laughs> I started having a couple of dreams about you know, spiritual dreams. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Really? I'm a young man. I'm kidding. It is. It is. It, have you have you had the, the the great pleasure of having a vision or a dream? Ask about that experience. I'm serious. Ask. One of the coolest things I ever looked. There was a lady I, I asked years ago, and there was a lady, and I, and this was a weird thing. I was in church. I was just praising and worshiping God, and I had this picture in my head, right, of this lady. This little girl was just forewarned. She started vomiting all this this bright green stuff. I'm like. And I felt God, I get an impression. So it was like my own thing to tell her. <laughs> tell her. That's gross. Tell her. <laughs> so I had this vision of you, and I told her, she's like, oh, thank you. And she was open, thankfully. The next Sunday, she comes back and makes me mirror and what happened. I was vomiting all this great stuff. She had cancer, and the treatment she had was coming out. It was the, it was, and she needed that. It was just a connection that when she said that, let me know this is okay. And I felt peace because of the vision. Mm -hmm. So, see how cool that is? Mm -hmm. Ask God for the best kind of experiences. Why not? Well, God will give me what He wants to give me. You have not because you ask not. Do you think, you, oh, I'm going to be stepping above my raisin if I ask God for something? I got to be humble. God, that's not healthy humility. That's what they call self-deprecation. Being yourself, I'm too holy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. No, God says, "Connect with me. Listen to me." God wants to give you experiences of life and joy. He wants that for you. He wants good things for you and me. If there's something you that you could wow, after a certain time, I know that vision dream we were talking about. I think that'd be kind of cool. Then ask and trust and wait patiently. And God will do with He promises to give us good things. The bottom line of all this is God is speaking with us in many ways, but are we truly deeply listening? The wrong question to say is, why isn't God talking to me? That's, you know, that's the wrong question. Why isn't God talking to me? The right question is, Lord, will you please open my vision, hearing to see and hear all that you are telling me? Again, the problem isn't in the talking, the problem is in the listening. That's all. That's the whole thing. As I get ready to close, I want to go back to the word again and do a little mini practice on active listening. Okay. I can take much, just a couple more minutes real quick. Active listening. So please, 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 as you listen to these, and I will tell you, I start out with eight. <laughs> and it's because I, I can get my point across and entry real, real well. Listen to these last three scriptures on what God is saying about you. What I'm asking you to do is go from listening and hearing words to active listening. Feeling the emotion, feeling the love, feeling the connection behind the words. Okay. This is what God feels about, thinks about, is passionate about for you. Three verses. John 15, 15. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made no, I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. What do you hear behind that verse? The God of the universe, the eternal master, has called you friend. I mean, let that sink in. You're his friend. Again, there's humility which says, Oh Lord, all glory to you. And then there's false humility which was, I'm not worthy. 
He himself calls you friend. He says you're worthy of my friendship. You know that passion and desire behind the words. This is letting God's word speak to you. This is listening, active listening to the word. Galatians 5 1 for freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm then and never submit again to be over slavery. Wow. What do you hear in that word? God tells you that you're free at last. You are free. You're no longer a slave to your sin because your chains are off. Dr. Martin Luther King spoke boldly of his awesome. I, I have such admiration. I cannot wait to meet that man. Such power behind his words. He obviously, obviously was and in eternity still is inspired by God. There's no doubt. That passion for freedom. That desire, that drive for freedom was powerful. He wanted equality with all mankind. The awesome truth is that it's our Jesus that will bring that equality to all mankind. And I can't wait. And finally, I saved my personal favorite for last. I'll tell you why I say personal favorite. I already moved it to it earlier. John 1 12. To all who did receive him, he gave them the right. Catch that word right to be the children of God, to be called the children of God, to those who believe in his name. In other words, you are God's own child. Now, I say this, and some people actually struggle with it, but I'm like, look, I'm just, it's in God's word in many places, not just here. God loves his creation equally, but only those who have received him and have, have prayed that Christ in you are the children of God. God doesn't mean he loves us more. He passionately loves and wants the world. But we are, until you receive Christ, you're not a child of God, you're a creation of God. There's a difference. Why is that important? It's important because God says it's an honored position. Again, not better than, not the bad losers, it's not that. There's no, that's the human garbage side. God says, I passionately love everyone I've ever created, regardless of their sin. I love them, right? No, no imbalance here. But take and understand the role that you have. How many acts do you wear? Some of you are mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, employer, employee. We have so many different titles we wear. So many. I dare say the most important title, the most important title that you can ever have is child of God. And I'm not just saying it to be nice for a sermon because it sounds sermony. I really mean that passionately. Who are you in Christ? Who are you in God? The Father, you're his child. That is crucial to remember that. Did you hear that? That we spoke to you in John 1. So when you listen to God speaking through his word, what words that I just read, those three verses, what is your reaction to that? What's your honest reaction? When you listen, did you feel moved or stirred inside by God's word? All oh, when I describe this. If not, it's okay. If you did great, if you didn't, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up with that. Be like, yeah, it's okay. But just ask God. Look, 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 help me to feel what you're speaking. Help me to hear what you're saying to me. I said to suggest that we go back and have the honest conversation with God and say, Lord, I want to, I want to hear and I want to feel your heart more behind your words. I want to make sure, Lord, when someone talks to me, I want to hear you. Do you help me to hear you? Well, open my eyes and ears, Lord. Clean out the old sockets because I want to hear you, Lord. I want to see you, Lord. Right? Listening to God is absolutely crucial, and that's what all today is about. Just know that as you do this, and as God responds to you, right, faithfully, your faith will increase. So if you see the tie into listening to God actively in faith, the more we actively listen to God and hear Him, the more our faith increases. Beautiful word, faith. Amen.